Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter card game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Cryptocurrency. It's by Capital Gains Studios. Two to four players, 13 and up, and takes 30 to 45 minutes to play the game. In the game Cryptocurrency, you're going to be basically a crypto miner. You're going to kind of build your own business. You're going to hire co-workers uh, or interns, and then you're going to uh, basically be processing Bitcoins. Uh, you can, of course, uh, buy them, try and mine them, or you can sell them along with, of course, trying to validate them. Uh, there's going to be rumors on each of the different types of Bitcoin currencies. Sometimes they'll be up, sometimes they'll be down, sometimes you'll know about them, sometimes you won't. And as you progress throughout the game, you're going to be then flipping them over at the end and seeing which one is the uh, least likely to be worth anything. That one will actually be called the declassified and like not worth anything. And the rest of them will be calculated and whoever has the most points is the winner. It also adds a little bit of a stock market theme to it because you're going to be using this tra chart to track the, the value of Bitcoins and uh, however many are left are going to be actually what is left in the game. So it does feel fun function similarly to just going ahead and mining bitcoins. Anyway, let's go ahead and show you what it looks like and all the components. So here we have cryptocurrency all set up. Let's go ahead and explain what you're going to get here. So first of all, each player is going to get three interns to start the game with, and these will change throughout the game. You're also going to get six of these dollars or currency. You're also going to set up for each specific type of crypto coin. For instance, there's Mysterio, Singakong, Eruptium, and Flint here. You're also then going to make sure you shuffle this deck up here. This is called the rumor deck. After you shuffle it up, you're going to then deal one face down and one face up rumor next to each coin and change the value of the coin. In general, they all start here at three, and then you're going to move them up or down based on the plus or minus values here. So for instance, Singakong is going to go up by two from three to five, and Eruptium is going to go down two from three to one. You're also going to set up for, depending on the style of play, the advanced mode or the basic mode, uh, a coin in the bank here. These are the ones you can buy and sell at the very beginning of the game. The rest of the coin will go off to the side and you'll be using these to purchase, to mine, and then you'll be able to, after mining them, selling them, and they'll go back into this pile here. But these are all mined coins. Uh, not only that, but you're also going to take one success card as well as all of these failure cards here and set them aside. You'll be using this when you choose to mine and make sure that you have each and every progress point here at the very beginning at the difficult of two. You're also going to take these guys here, shuffle the deck up, and deal out three face down. They're going to show the different types of coins here, and they're going to be used for validations. Uh, then you're also going to set aside all the currency in place so people can see them. You, of course, you got your debt over here, and finally you're going to have five of these workers that you can purchase from the top of the deck here face up, and uh, the rest of the deck is going to be here. Make sure you go ahead and shuffle that as well. And then the box off to the side. That's pretty much all you need for the setup of the game. Cryptocurrency all right. Okay, so basically in the game Cryptocurrency, you're going to start off with your interns, your secret hidden rumor card, which could either be a bonus or a minus, depending on what it is, along with $6. And you're going to be then taking turns to uh, utilize your interns. Now, you can do three things. You can buy Bitcoin, you can sell Bitcoin, and you can mine Bitcoin. Mining them is going to be dependent on the difficulty level, and you're going to be using multiple guys or a single guy, depending on the difficulty of, the, of mine. And uh, you could also choose to buy them or sell them. When you buy them, you can make the price go up, and when you sell them, you can make the price go down. There's a, depending on the number of players, there's a uh, few rounds of the game. In a four-player game, it's four rounds, and in a five player, uh, in a two or three-player game, it is uh, five rounds. So longer with less players. Uh, and there's a certain amount of Bitcoin to utilize. Once you have burned through all the Bitcoin, there is no more of that type left. You can no longer gain Bitcoin. However, you can validate, uh, you can gain validation fees with the cards on the board. That can give you bonus points. It can also influence the uh, price of the coin, whether it be influencing them to the positive or to the negative. Your objective is pretty simple, though. You want to have the most currency at the end of the game. You want to be able to sell off all your coin and make the most money. So holding is the best and most valued Bitcoins at the end is going to be the most successful aspect of the game. Not only that, but you're also going to be buying these uh these new employees. So you're going to start off with infant turns that don't do anything, but these guys here are going to have different abilities that will in some way influence uh, how you're going to be playing. After everybody has taken their turns, basically, uh, you're going to do this kind of refreshing phase where all the guys are going to pop out. You can choose to get loans. You have to pay back your loans. You're going to be able to purchase new employees, and you're going to be able to place rumors down. And, of course, the players that are in the game are going to get to place them either face down or face up, depending on the round. And if there's uh, less players than four, you're going to be having the computer place them face up or face down from the deck to illustrate the influence on the Bitcoin. That's the basic idea of the game at the end. Like I said, whoever has the most money is the winner. Let me go ahead and show you a couple rounds of play as well as what you can basically do in the game, and then I'll tell you what I think about it.
So we're back and let's go through a walkthrough of the game with two players. We've went ahead and set up everything already as we talked about. And of course the new starting values that were once three have now been moved based on the face up rumors. Of course there's still the face down rumors. And to start it off, we're going to go ahead and mole and refresh the job. So we're gonna go ahead and drop out five of these guys here. And then if everybody says it's okay, you can keep them. If you didn't want them, you can actually take them, discard them and flip five new ones over. But for the sense of demoing, we'll just stick with the five that we have here. After that, you're going to go ahead and draw a rumor card for each player. So you'll take these guys here and look at them secretly and then hide them until later. After that, you can go ahead and take a loan if you'd like. One of these guys here is going to give you eight bucks. However, at the end, you're going to actually end up having to pay the loan interest off. And of course, you can pay the loan off if you can afford to. So if the player wants to, they can go ahead and take one of these guys here. Maybe he'll do that. It'll also net him eight dollars. So he'll go ahead and do that as well. But remember, loans can be tricky because you're going to have to navigate when you want to pay them off. All right, after we're done doing that, then you're going to get a chance to hire experts. Experts have a cost here at the top right hand corner. It's five, six, three, six, five. And when you go ahead and buy one, you're going to in turn order. Uh, did, uh, pay the cost of one of these guys as well as removing one of the team uh, team leads that you have so for instance if this player was the first player he could simply choose to spend five dollars and buy this fintech specialist this would actually be in here and then he would get this guy although it would remove one of his other guys here and it would be removed from the game adding this one here each character has power this has a two and this has a one as well as potentially when you buy them a special ability like this one coins cost one less dollar and uh, when you sell it it'll gain you one more dollar so that's pretty useful and the next player is going to get an opportunity as well and you only get to buy one expert uh, uh, per turn uh, per player so maybe he wants this uh let's see how about a big one since he got a loan might as well get a nice one right let's take this guy here so he's going to pay six dollars here and then he's going to get this guy for two power gain double transaction fees if you uh, validate any transactions removing one of his interns now he's got another guy to use okay after that you're going to then refresh the experts by discarding all that's left over and adding new ones to the board, five new ones. And then there's Tweetman right there, data analyst, a diversifier, a tech whiz, and another tech whiz. Then you're gonna move on to the next phase, which is the action phase. And in, uh, oh, and also don't forget too, in the very beginning of the game, you're, uh, oh, sorry, no, no, we're good, we're good. Action phase, in order, uh, you're gonna buy, sell, and do mining. So the first player to start off with is this guy here, and he is going to get to choose uh, to buy uh, or to, to buy, sell, or to mine coin. Now he doesn't have a lot of money, so he's not going to be able to buy much. And the cost of the coins are going to be based on the value of them right here. Ooh, I almost dropped this guy, dropped the ball here for a second. That looks like we're okay though. Um, so if he wanted to buy one of these guys here, he could for one. Uh, each one of these energies is gonna let you buy up to four. And when you buy up to four, uh, you're going to increase the value. So if I bought four of these guys here at six a piece, so that'd be $24, I'd move this up one. If I bought eight, I would move it up twice. And um, you, you're gonna move it up after you buy it. So the cost isn't going to increase at that point. Uh, you could also choose to sell coins if you have any. This is the bank starting total for each of the different coins. You're going to have five of them to purchase. Uh, but if you don't wanna do that, you can choose to mine. And how mining works is pretty simple. You choose one of the coins based on maybe what you think is gonna be valuable. Maybe this is the best one here. And then you're going to uh, basically turn these guys sideways. And based on the number that you turn sideways, and you could have more than one if you'd like to mine, you're going to then check the difficulty. So this is a difficulty of two, and he used a two, which means you're going to take a success, and then you're going to add one of these here. You're going to shuffle them up and draw cards based on the uh, amount you've chosen based on the difficulty. So if the difficulty was three, would be three cards with one success in it, and two, it's two cards with one success, and drawing two here. So he'd draw both of these, and he would succeed. And when you succeed, you're going to gain a reward, which is Bitcoin. So you would take three of these guys here, sorry, from the mining pool, not from the buying and selling pool, put them on his little board there, his character in his area, and uh, validate. So here we'll look at the hat. And over here, are the validation cards, this one has a hat here. So we're going to flip it over and validate for zero. Zero times one is zero, so he doesn't get any money, but this is going to change the value and it's going to go down two, unfortunately. So he just lost a little bit of currency there. This would get discarded and a new one would come down. If there's more than one hat, you would validate all of them. 
Uh, after that, he's done. He's went ahead and done his difficulty, his reward, and his validation. This is going to progress up the difficulty track, meaning it's more difficult to mine them because there is less to mine. The next player is going to get to his well now decide. So if he wants to, he could choose to, uh, oh, let's go ahead and tap this guy here. And maybe we'll also, we'll go for green over here now. Two difficulty, he's got two, so it's another guaranteed. You flip over both of them. And he's going to score one, two, and three. Nice, nice and easy. Uh, this is going to progress on the track here, and we're also going to go ahead and uh, check for uh, validating. We have a zero, and we had one right here, so we flip it over. That gives us a plus one, moving this up so it's a little more valuable. That's pretty nice for him. Good job. And we're going to continue. Now, for instance, if I wanted to, I could tap this guy here, and I can go ahead and sell up, up to four of these for, for one, uh, and I can get the value of it, so this would be four. So if I wanted to sell all three of them, that would be 12 here. And if I sold four of them, this would move down one, but if I don't sell four, if I just sell three or less, it won't move down at all. Maybe I will go ahead and just sell two of these guys here, which will give me eight dollars. When you sell them, they're going to go into here, and you're going to collect the currency from the bank over here, so you've done a good job mining. After that, his turn is over. The next player is going to get to go. He'll go ahead and tap these two here. And he's going to go ahead and try and mine this one more time because that looks pretty good. The difficulty is three, so he's going to get one card, two cards, and three. Somebody will shuffle them up so that you can't see. So he doesn't know what it, what uh, what is what and which one is good. He gets to draw two of these cards. Hopefully, he gets a success. He does. He succeeds. If he doesn't, he would fail, and that's not good. But he succeeds. So that means he's going to get three more of these coins. Nice. That's pretty good there. Uh, move this here and put these guys here. This will go up on the track after you validate uh, for one. Anything here to validate? Nope. So this is going to go up. And uh, the rewards are going to be less. So next time there's many mines here, it'll only be for two, but the validation will be for two, two, four, one, eight, one, sixteen, and zero, thirty-two. So you can get some real money there. Uh, and then, of course, this player will get a chance to tap this guy here. Maybe he wants to go ahead and go for this one here. Uh, that was going to be difficulty of two, so we'll take these guys here. Shuffle, 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 shuffle. Hopefully he pulls it off. Ah, he succeeds. Wow, I'm getting really lucky here. And this is, of course, difficulty of two, so he made sure he did that. He gets a reward of three more of these guys here. One, two, and three. And uh, validating this here. There's a lion. Yep, let's see what happens. Plus one. That's good. That's good. Helps him out a little bit. Puts this over here. Puts this over here. And this moves up the track. Now, as you notice, these guys have all been utilized, so there's no, you can't use them anymore. So we're going to move on to the next portion. We're going to go up to the upkeep phase, and we're going to have to pay loan interest. Well, for every loan you have, there's an interest, so it's going to cost this guy $2. He's going to lose $2 here. And if he wants, he can pay off this loan. Uh, he doesn't have enough money, only has six, and it would cost eight to pay off. Uh, he doesn't have a loan, so we won't worry about that. Go to the rumor phase, which is in reverse turn order. So this guy's going to go first. He's going to look at his rumor card and then he's going to get to place it down on one location he wants. Right now he's got Flint here. Um, and we're going to look at the far left hand side. This is face down. So whatever the one that is next to it is, we're going to do the exact opposite. And placing that up, that's going to increase the value of Flint, which is really good. We want to do that. And then the next player in, 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 in opposite turn order is going to get to choose. In a two player game, it's going to be this guy here. He's got another plus one. And right now he's got a lot of red. So maybe he'll put this right here. And that is going to increase red's value up to seven. So that's good as well. So after that, the last thing you need to do is go ahead and notice that these are missing. So you're going to go ahead and take these guys here from the deck and flip them up and place them down face up based on whatever is next to it. Plus one and plus one for blue and for uh I guess it's like grayish brown over here. And then once that is all done, if there was three or four players, you would do three players and then one from the deck. Or if it was four players, all four would just be placed down face up. Now the next cards are going to be face down, provided these don't move. If these move face down, these would go face up. And that's basically it for that. The rumor phase is over. And we're going to go to the end of turn phase now. We're going to pass the first player marker to the next player. And we're going to pass the last player marker to the last player. And then back once again. We're going to go ahead and choose to uh, make sure the jobs are all here and uh, go ahead and draw a rumor for each player and then you're going to go ahead and decide if you'd like to take a loan or not if you'd like to hire any of the experts here by purchasing them refreshing them and then going to the action phase in turn order where you buy and sell or mine 
Uh, then up back to the upkeep phase, where you do your loan interest, you pay off your loans. Your rumor phase, where you're doing reverse turn order these cards here. So in this instance now, after we maybe move this around a little bit based on the placement and stuff like that, um, how well people have done, then you're going to place these down like this, face down. And after that, you would continue playing the game, right? Passing the player markers. Now, the game is going to continue based on the number of players. In a four-player game, the game will end here, so there's only going to be four rounds of the game. But in a two- or three-player game, the game is going to end here. So let's go ahead and just do this uh, very, very simply. Just speed this up to show you how an end of game is going to kind of look. So now we're going to make sure they add these guys up here. Blue's going to go up two. Uh, red will go up one. Now this one's going to go down one, and this one's going to go down one as well. These guys will be face down, and uh, these guys will all be face up. So it'll look something like this. Uh, one, one, one. So everything goes up one, one except for blue. Blue will go up two. And at that point, the game is going to end. And uh, what's going to happen is you're going to count up all your currency as well as flipping these guys over to see what happens. The ones you flip over are going to change the results of this over here. So this will go down one because it's two, minus two and plus one. Over here is going to be minus two for blue. Over here is going to be minus three. This goes all the way down to one. And these guys go down minus three as well. One, two, and three. But also don't forget about these hidden, these beginning ones over here. So we have blue at minus one. We have red at minus two. Green is at plus two. And uh, this one here is at plus two. After that's all set in stone, you're going to go ahead and check uh, the values totaling all of these guys up. So you add them all up, two, four, uh, six, and then this is two, three, and four. Uh, this one over here is uh, four. Uh, six, so this would be a two. Uh, this one over here is two, four, five, six. This is two over here as well. And then three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, so that would be seven, six, five. So this is the lowest one. So based on the total combined, this is the lowest one, which means this is a dud. And any currency you have left over that you didn't choose to sell throughout the game is going to be worth nothing. Uh, so you got to be careful about that. Maybe buying and selling early is a good idea. Then you're going to hand out these hodler bonuses and sell based on your ending result, based on the currency you have. So you just end up selling these guys here for seven a piece, this one here for seven, and all of these here for five. And then the player uh, with the most of these coins is going to get bonus is right here uh, out of all the value and whoever has the most is going to be the winner of the game obviously it's going to be resulting in a lot different uh, uh, characters are going to be having and whatnot as well as uh, how much this is going to be changing throughout the difficulty meter and uh, just so you can make sure that you guys understand remember that if the difficulty is five here and you chose to tap two dudes or two energy you're going to get five of these cards and you're going to get to draw two of them after somebody shuffles it so it's really really less likely that you're actually going to pull it off so you're going to need to make your uh your crew really strong there's a lot of characters here that do a ton of different things like flipping over a rumor card that can change the result of how these go face up and face down and buying and selling um any mixture of coins and uh, when you mine coins create an additional coin so all these things play a role in how the game works but that's just a basic understanding walkthrough of how the game kind of functions all right let's come and talk about it So for my review for cryptocurrency, there is a lot to this game involving risk and reward. Not only that, but a lot of taking chances, right? Because what you're trying to do is trying to build up your cryptocurrency to the best it can be. However, you don't necessarily know what the face down rumors are going to be at the start of the game, along with the ones that you don't place yourself face down. The face up ones can give you a good idea, but that doesn't necessarily mean that your coin is going to be worth any money at the end of the game. Because what can happen is things can be switched around, which is a very interesting aspect to the game. It has beautiful components and the artwork is stellar. I just I like it just as much as the original uh, game previous to this one that they just made, Detzilla. That was a really fun, beautiful artwork. Same kind of style as this one with a completely different theme. This is the best cryptocurrency themed game I have played so far. It does have a stock, stock, stock market theme, so if you do enjoy stock market games, you're going to enjoy this one as well. The rumors add a very nice twist to the game, along with the fact that when you buy currency, it's going to increase the value, and when you sell currency, it's going to decrease the value. It has all that stock market engine, but not only that, it has value 
validation fees. As you progress through the difficulty of the game, pulling cards, which is also a risk reward, do you want to spend eight for an eight difficulty to guarantee that you're going to get that 32 bucks times whatever validation cards you have in the field? Or maybe you want to go ahead and chance it with just one. That could be worth a ton more because now you have so many more actions to save. But like I said, risk reward. Do you want to, at the end of the game, sell all the currency you think might not be worth anything? Or when suddenly you realize that you sold all the currency you thought was going to be worth nothing, now it is the highest valued currency or even the only valued currency, right? Because there's only, there is a possibility that there could only be one currency that is worth anything. If all of them get a value of negative one and your crappy currency worth nothing is going to have a value of positive two, that currency is going to be the only one that is not a dud and you can win the game still. So even when you feel like you're left out, as long as you know more information than other players facing down, you can still have a chance at the game. Now, of course, this is a strategy game in which you're going to be trying to pull the best employees possible using all of their strategies and all of their special abilities. You're going to have characters like Tweetman and the Tech Wiz, the project manager, one of my favorites because he has a lot of actions, the White Hat and the Black Hat hackers that all do different things involving the rumors, and even the Fee Broker gain double transactions transaction fees if you validate a transaction. There's also characters that when you go ahead and buy and sell based on a, high, a lower value than actually four, you can move the tracker around, which will influence it even more, and that has a huge potential to sway the game. Overall, cryptocurrency is an excellent game. It's a lot of fun. If you like stock market games, you're going to enjoy this one. If you like taking chances, it's also a game you're going to enjoy. And if you like the style artwork like I do, I would definitely suggest picking up cryptocurrency. As far as negatives go, this game, like I said, has a ton of chance. So if you don't like games that you don't want to be pulling from the hand and hoping to God that you're going to score the right card, probably a game you should pass on because it's going to have a lot of that. Also, if you don't like the hidden uh, information style games, this is also one that's not going to be for you because a lot of hidden information is involved in this game and just when you think you've done the best because you've made the best choices as far as pulling cards and and uh, getting the best characters and all that suddenly your coins that you have are worth nothing and you lose well that happens as well overall though excellent game i give it my full recommendation for uh cryptocurrency once again another great game go ahead and check it out on kickstarter description below all right, guys, thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game review. If you like this video, go and check out the rest of our videos here on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and comment. It does help. We do greatly appreciate it. And if you're going to be at Gen Con, we're releasing this just before, go ahead and say hi to me. We'll be walking around, checking out games and whatnot. Also, go ahead and check out Cryptocurrency. Like I said before, it's in the description below. It's a really fun game. If you're a stock market player, you're going to like this. And if you're a crypto nut, you're going to also like this game. I, I know I personally like Cryptocurrency, so uh, it's got the theme for me. Also, you can go ahead and check out our website, unfilteredgamer.com. We have tons of blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more, as well as our friends at boardgames.com and the Giveaway Geek, two great sites with even more giveaways than my own. All right, guys, that's all I got for you this time. And as always, I love you, and I look forward to mining with you next time.